comments and questions are appreciated because I'm writing at ex exactly two articles based on this presentation. So there are two hard different articles being created uh, since this research I've done through the fall and now here in New York. And I would like to start telling you just two stories uh, that I think are very emblematic and interesting to start my presentation. So I would like to start with the story of Samuel Cornish. Uh, he's the founder with John Roosevelt the, from uh, the Freedom's Journal in 1827. And the attempt, he, he and other leaders, black leaders, they tried to create a school for blacks in New, in New Haven, New Haven, in 1831. So they tried a lot, and they started uh, looking for support among black leaders, especially religion, religious leaders, and also with black uh, white abolitionists. And they got they got some uh, financial support. They got the money enough to create the school, and they chose New Haven because of the people of New Haven, they, there were, they quote this, they said, they used it to say that the New Haven people were uh, the Calvinist tradition and they were open and to, to black people and they used it to give opportunities. So it was a interesting place to create a black school. And another thing, they, they thought it would be very good because it was, very close to Yale, Yale, Yale. I don't know how to say this name, but the college, the Yale College, was a growing uh, center for producing of knowledge in the in the region. So they thought it would be very good having a black school close to this college of Yale. And they tried. They got the money. They got the leadership together to be able to to create this school, but. They couldn't because a uh, representative of the municipality of New Haven, uh, when they get in, got in touch with them to try to establish the school, it was denied because the people uh, of the, the community decided that it would not be good having a school for blacks there. And the professors, some professors of Yale, and some students, and especially some alumni uh, from the South which were, they were uh, former students in Yale, they decided that it, it would be bad for the university having a black school there, yeah, close to that college. So they couldn't. There was the attempt, they got everything they, they needed, but they didn't get the support of the community and the, the university. So there, there was no business school in 1831. At the same moment, and it, this, for me, it's very interesting. I'm trying to compare the black movement action on education here and there in Brazil and the US. At the same period, it was created the first uh, black paper, the black, black periodical in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro. It was called by Francisco de Paula Brito, the editor. It was called O Homem de Cor, and it was created to present the demands of the black population in, in Rio, the, the news and the agents of these people, the black people in Rio de Janeiro. 20 years later, there was something that I really, it was really interesting for me when I learned about this with a, a student, a master's student in my grade program, like my grad, graduate program in my university, Igor Ferreira, he told me and I learned with him uh, through his research about the Pretestato Passo da Silva, a black man who created a black school to teach black young people in Rio de Janeiro in 1853. And what called my, taste, my attention is that it was really difficult to create a school in Rio de Janeiro in that moment. It was the federal district, it was the capital of Brazil, and it was really hard to get the license, to get the permission of the government to, to establish a school. And in the, when he was justifying the creation of the school for, for black students, he told the government that the parents asked him 
to create this school because their children would not be accepted in the other schools of the city. So it was created specially, specifically to teach black uh, young people and the permission was gave by the government, which was really impressive. And I think these two stories link it to the newspaper, the black newspaper, black periodicals, and schools, <coughs> the of creation of schools, are very emblematic of what I will try to, to tell you with my presentation, which is the importance given by the black people to education and to the circulation of information through the diaspora. So it, the, it was, uh, it were, two very important things to, to the black population in Brazil and in US and probably in many other countries. So I will come back to, to this story later. <coughs>